Last night, the Empire State Building, about 15 blocks from here, was lit up red. Why is that news? Because it was supposed to be green. Iranian opposition protesters had requested that the Empire State Building be lit up green to protest President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's visit to the United Nations. Green has been the color of the opposition movement, right? And the Empire State Building does light up different colors for different occasions, so they thought, why not ask? Well, the request was denied. But in what appeared to be a very happy coincidence, the building was scheduled to be lit up in green anyway to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Wizard of Oz, you know, Emerald City and all that. Well, we reported on Wednesday that activists plan to celebrate the happy coincidence. They're also planning on cheering at the Empire State Building when it lights up green tomorrow night at sunset. That didn't happen. As of Wednesday night, green was the plan, which I can prove because I've got this screenshot from the Empire State Building's own website saying it's going to be green. But then last night, it changed to red. What, Dorothy's ruby red slippers? <laughs> Come on. It's a big, tall, incandescent fail. We called today to find out what happened. We received this response from Edelman Public Relations. Quote, the Empire State Building does not use its iconic tower lights to make political statements or support protests of any kind. Right, that's presumably why they denied the request in the first place. But this would imply that they specifically changed the lighting color so as to not even accidentally be supportive of an unrelated protest. I would like to speak with the man behind the curtain about this. Joining us now is comedian, actress, singer, and my pal, Sandra Bernhardt. Her new album is called Whatever It Takes. It is out now. You should buy it. It's really good. Sandra, thank you for being here. Hi, it's my pleasure. I've been waiting for so long. We watch from our bed, and we wait, and we hope <laughs> that we can get on and talk about all of the great subjects of our times and the day, and here we are talking about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited because I, the idea of all the Iranian protesters and those celebrating the 70th anniversary of Wizard of Oz will all meet together under the green <laughs> awning. It was and such a happy coincidence. It was a happy coincidence. But now red for the Wizard of Oz? I don't, is there any well, plausible way in which that's... Well, as you mentioned, you know, click your heels three times and say, there's no place like home. There's no, even if it's Tehran. <laughs> You still will get home somehow. It won't be quite as, you know, dreamy. And there might not be, you know, a tin man. Or maybe there will be a tin man. I, I mean, even know. a yellow for Yellow Brick Road would have made more sense anyway. Well, I, I, don't, mind the, I don't mind the red, you know, I'm just you know happy illusion. For but, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that they didn't get what they, they needed, the poor Iranians. What do you um, think about Obama kind of... Uh, pulling off this coup at the G20 with the surprise press release, uh, the surprise press announcement, and all this diplomatic maneuvering. It's sort well, of, I can't even keep track of it. I, mean, I think he had to bring some sort of, like, you know, seriousness to the whole event because we have people like Berlusconi, like, saying to, to Michelle Obama, come to Papa, hey. <laughs> you know, and then you got Gaddafi and Aka Menejad, and they're all, I mean, it's, to me, it's like they're, they're all a bunch of... Uh, Jokers plucked from from the the, the set of um, Batman, you know, played by uh, Caesar Romero and then Frank Gorshin. I mean, it's like the Joker. And I, I, what is going on with the, with the international politicians? They're well, all just right, so Obama bizarre. is sort of outsmarting them. Is what's well, it doesn't part take much. <laughs> I mean, these people are fools. There's buffoons. Um, your new record, whatever it takes, is a little bit of a G20. You're it is kind, a It's G20. kind of wor world music. -y. Absolutely, it is. What was the thinking behind that? What was the inspiration? Well, the man who, who co-wrote it with me and, and presented it to me, Ted Mason, is, is very plugged into the African music uh, scene and, um, you know, the uh, Middle Eastern music scene. And we wanted to do something that was sort of a bridge, you know, to, to reach out to the world. Um, considering what's been going on for the past eight years and the sort of fear of travel and, you know, the, the doubt about other cultures. This was like kind of a breakthrough celebration of the Obama administration and just, you know, getting on planes and traveling again, metaphorically and, and, and physically and spiritually. So the music's really reflective of the, of the things I like to do. I like to go to, to new cultures and other countries. And... Um, it's, you know, it's kind of a beautiful celebration of that. I will 
confess though that I know because I know you personally I know that you have been doing something very American which is that you are newly obsessed with dancing oh, so you think you can dance with the whoever dancing well I never watched Dancing with the Stars until Tom DeLay really lured I me not, in I do not think of you as a reality show kind well, of you know I'm enthusiast. not but I mean how can you resist look, look. How can, Tom DeLay in a, in a brown kind of leisure suit cut off you know at, at, at the, the, the arms and a pair of like High heel boots that prints threw away. I mean, he's like out there shaking his booty in the face of the judges. I'm like, this is like a car wreck. You've just got to stop and watch it. The bleeding. You want to help staunch the bleeding, but you can't help but you're obsessed with it. I can't wait till next week to see. I think he's doing a tango next week. Oh my God. It's so sick, but it's so like, it's kind of the perfect metaphor for that whole sort of, you know, fundamentalist right wing, you know, vibe. Well, like, he was the guy who invaded against smut well, that's on this what particular I mean. show. I mean, he, yeah. like, didn't he really go after uh, Bill Clinton for his sexual well, peccadillos? Well, he went after Jerry Springer for being too smutty for that same TV show. Well, this is really interesting because <laughs> I don't know if you watched it. I watched it in slow motion, which I thought would make it better, but it was, see, there it is in slow motion. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, oh. It's, it's worse. Oh, in there, slow motion, I it's mean, worse. I mean, look at that. This is, like, grotesque. It's like somebody's disgusting uncle at a... Look at him! I don't think it's woman. grotesque. I think it's important. Well, it is. It's yeah. really really important that you know we get make sure that after this he goes to prison <laughs> i got you babe got you with my tango moves oh got you with my tango moves <laughs> i mean he is like on fire he's a sex machine Ooh. sandra bernhardt comedian actress recording artist person who makes me blush uh, the new album is called whatever it takes it's available now um, we're about to make cocktails can you stay I, can I stay I wish I'd brought the fondue pot and, and some cheese we could have melted up some fondue that is my secret do not tell anybody about that we have actual cocktails in a cocktail moment coming up hold on we'll be right back